Hello world, I'm Tony, I'm the author of Tubo Laravel, a package that bridges Hotwire and Laravel. And today I'm here to build an application with you and demo the package. I've done an introduction on Hotwire before, but I didn't really dive into using the package and I thought it would be cool to do a longer version of that talk, put it online. So yeah, here it is. I hope you enjoy it and yeah, let's build it. The first thing you are going to do is getting familiar with Hotwire and especially around Tubo. Tubo is the heart of Hotwire and it's the driving library that makes everything work. So there are a couple complementary techniques to Tubo itself and we are going to dive into those in more details. I've built an application that we can use to demo the package and it's called Basic Camp. It's a simpler version of Base Camp. Right now, there is nothing installed, no Tubo, no Tubo Laravel, nothing. And it's a traditional Laravel application that is doing server rendered HTML. So let's sign in. And now let's create a project. Once we do that, we get to the project screen and then we have to do's and campfire. To do's is where we are going to demo everything. So in the to do's section, we have the to do's list and a link to create a to do and the form to create a to do, which has validations. And then we can create a new to do and we get redirected to the to do list. Now we can edit a to do and that gets us to the to do form. And then we can save it and get back to the to do list again. As you can see, this is a traditional MVC application and it would be cool if we could get this more dynamic. First thing that we are going to do is installing Turbo. So let's install Turbo. I'm installing it as a dev dependency. Once that's done, let's open our app.js file and import Turbo over here. Now that we have it imported, we can start the Turbo process. Now let's compile our assets. Now that this is done, let's go back to the browser so I can show what that did. So I'm, I'm going to open the dev tools and then we can refresh the page. And now I'm going to filter only the Ajax requests and I'm going to navigate around a bit. So I'm going to the create task form. And as you can see, instead of doing a full page refresh, Turbo hijacked the link and made the page transition work as an Ajax request. And it does that for everything, for clicks and for forms automatically. We don't have to do anything. The component in Turbo that does this thing is called Turbo Drive, and it's the successor of Turbo Links, a previous library from Rails that used to have this behavior. But we still have the same navigation issues. Well, not issues, but it could be improved. So instead of going to the form to create a to-do, what if we inject the form over here? So let's do that. Let's go to the index page on creating a to-do. And over here, we can wrap this code with a Turbo Frame tag. This is a custom HTML tag that ships with Turbo. So once Turbo is installed in your application, you'll be able to use this custom HTML tag. And we have to give it an ID. So we are going to call it create task. Let's see how our application behaves. I'm going to refresh and try to click the add to do link. And we'll see that there is an error in the console and the request was actually made. If we go to the console, we can see that it was trying to find a matching turbo frame in the response body, but there was none. We can fix that by adding the turbo frame around our form in the create to do's form. Let's do that. I'm going to give it the same ID as the turbo frame in the index page around the link. And just by doing that, if we refresh and try again, we can see that the form shows up. This is not done yet, so 
If we try to create a to do now, we can see that nothing actually happens and the button is back. There are a couple of things going on here. If we try to refresh the page, we'll see that the to do was actually created. So what we see is that the list of to do's is not being updated with the new to do and the to do form is replaced by the button again. That's not the only issue though. Right click on the add to do link and open it as a new tab. We can see the create to do form again. And by the way, this also serves to demonstrate that if you build an application like this, it will also gracefully downgrade when you don't have JavaScript enabled. I think that's pretty cool on its own. If we try to submit this form on the new to do page, we can see that there is validation going on. If we try to submit it from the index page, we see that the form is gone and no errors are showing. And that's mainly because of how Laravel handles validation redirects by default. So I have a sketch here and so we are on the index page for tasks and there is a form there. We submit it, it gets handled by that route task store and then a validation exception is thrown which redirects the user back. Back in this context is the task index page with, which has the add tasks link which gets replaced by the form. But that's not really what we want here. Instead of redirecting back, we always have to redirect to the form, to the task creation form. The form will re-render on that page with the validation form. So that form with the validation message will get injected in the task index page, replacing the existing form, which got submitted with the invalid data, showing the correct validation message. We can do that by instructing the validation exception to redirect to a specific page. So let's try that. If we go to the web routes, we can look for the create task route and then we can surround this with a try catch. And then we can catch the validation exception. We are going to re-throw it, but this time we are going to redirect to a specific route, which is the create tasks route. Now let's try to submit the form with invalid data again. We now can see that the form re-renders with the validation errors. That's cool, but we still have the issue of not updating the task list. So let's fix that. So now we actually want to update two places on screen. We want to update the task list and we want to update the form with a new version of the form instead of the button reappearing over here. We saw how turbo frames work, but it's not going to help us in this case because we're trying to update two fragments on the page at the same time. And for that, we can use turbo streams. Turbo streams can also be used over WebSockets and we are going to see that, but right now we are just going to use HTTP. So I'm going to back to the code and I'm going to create a new view file. Under resources, views, tasks, I'm going to create a folder called Tubo. Inside of this folder, I'm going to create a new blade file called created screen dot blade. There's nothing special about this file. It's just a blade file. And we are going to add some Tubo stream tags over here. If we head over to the Tubo documentation on the Tubo streams, we can see the examples of using Tubo streams. Similar to Tubo frames, Tubo streams are custom HTML tag that ships with Tubo. So a Tubo stream consists of an action, a target, and a template children. The action can be either append, prepend, replace, update, or remove. And the target is the DOM ID of the element that you want to interact with. In this case, it's appending a message to the message DOM ID. We are going to use prepend so we can stack the new task on top of the existing task. And we are also going to use update to update the form with a new form. We are using update instead of replace because I want to keep the turbo frame tag around the form and just replace the form itself. 
and replace would get rid of the target entirely and replace it with, with a new element while update does exactly what we want it keeps the element and changes its content so let's copy the prepend and update example i'm gonna delete the replace once we get to the file i'm gonna paste it over here and i'm gonna delete the replace and this is what we want so before we change this let's head back to the index page and see the task list so if we check here we are looping over all tasks we are including a partial for each task let's wrap the task list around a container using the tasks id so we are going to use this as the target to append the new task to and we are going to use the same partial that we are using over here in the turbo stream i'm just going to replace this div with this one and update this to use the same matching id over here there's nothing special about a turbo stream target it just has to be a dom element with a dom id so that solves the task issue now let's do the same for the form so if we head back to the create tasks page we can see that the form is rendered in a partial and let's copy that and place it over here so the way the form works is it expects a task model and i don't have that so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to instantiate a new task model and for new tasks i also have to pass the project so i can fetch the project from the task that i just created which is over here now let's set the target correctly so we are going to use the turbo frame dom id for now and that should take care of everything over here so let's go to the routes again and now instead of redirecting back we want to render that turbo stream file so we only want to do that for requests done by turbo let's head back to the application so i can show you what's going on so when we try to create a new task let's inspect the request that created the task and under the request header section we can see the accept header when Turbo intercepts the form submission, it automatically sets the Turbo stream content type to the accept header. So this should tell us that we can return a Turbo stream response from our controller that handles the form submission. So let's do that. I can get the header using the request helper. It's the accept header. And I can check if this header contains the turbo stream content type using the string helper. Now, if this is true, it means that I can return a turbo stream response. So let's render the view. I need to pass the test that we just created to it. So we can do that like so. I have to assign the task, which we can do over here. Now let's try this out in the browser. And nothing happens, but we can see that there is a new console error. Let's try to read it. And it's trying to find that matching turbo frame. If we inspect the response, we can see that the turbo stream was actually rendered. But if we check the header for the content type on the response, we can see that it's set to text HTML. That's why Turbo is trying to find a matching turbo frame. So there's, we are not telling Turbo that this is actually a turbo stream that it should apply. So let's do that. Let's override the header. Let's wrap the view call with the response helper. And on it, we can set the content type header. And we can set it to the same value as we are checking above here. Now let's try the application again. And this time everything worked. Now let's enhance the editing behavior. 
I don't want to get redirected to the edit form and then back to the list again. I actually want the edit form to render in line over here as we did for the new task form. Let's head over to the index page. And we are interested in the task partial. So we're going to wrap this entire partial with a turbo frame. We're going to give it a task underscore and using the task ID to give it a unique DOM ID. Now let's open the edit form and wrap the form with a turbo frame using the same DOM ID. If we head over to the application and try to click the edit button again, the form should appear in line and we should be able to update the tasks. We are still not handling validation messages in the edit flow, so if we try to submit this empty, we will get redirected to where we were before we try to make the change. So it's a similar error. Our is trying to redirect us back and, you know, back is not what we want. So let's go to the routes file and change that again. This is where we update a task and I'm going to surround this with a try catch block again. And we are going to catch the validation exception. And I'm going to retrow it, setting the redirect to route, to the edit task route this time, passing the task. Let's try this in the browser. Let's try submitting empty and then we can see that the validation actually works and updating also works, which is cool. So this is Hotwire 101, but let's try to clean this all up because I'm not sure about you, but if I had to do this for all my controllers, I would be pissed. Let's commit what we have. So this was the first part. We have covered a lot from Turbo Drive, Turbo Frames, and then Turbo Streams. In the next episode, we are going to introduce the Turbo Laravel package, and we are going to clean some of this stuff up. And also, we are going to enhance our application by introducing WebSockets. We are going to do it all, and we will learn how to send Turbo Streams over WebSockets and update the page to all the users connected to that same page. So I'll see you in the next episode.